At the core of the Roman Empire was their engineering prowess, and most notable of all their infrastructure advances was the Roman Arch. The arch bridge and arched structures allowed the Romans to construct buildings with a far greater ratio of wall openings to height than had ever been possible before. The evidence of such architecture is found not only in the Roman Colosseum, but also the labyrinth of arched catacombs that lie beneath historic Rome. Focusing in on the arch bridge, it was a technology never seen before, one that allowed boats to pass under walkways and roads, and one that enabled the Roman's famous series of raised aqueducts. But ultimately, why was the arched bridge so crucial to the Roman Empire, and what structural properties of the arch have enabled Roman architecture to survive relatively intact even to modern times? An arch bridge was, and is, so revolutionary to structural design because the elements of which function almost entirely in compression. Due to the distribution of both dead and live loads on the arches, stresses are always translated into compression, allowing for materials such as rock or unreinforced concrete to be used effectively. If you know anything about concrete's and rock's material strength, you likely know that neither function practically in tension loading. Nowadays, concrete beams are reinforced with rebar to allow for tension loading, but the Romans didn't have that ability. As an arch's radius of curvature increases, it begins to behave slightly more like a beam. Therefore, low compression forces, or tension forces, begin to appear on the underside of the arch. The Pantheon, still the biggest unreinforced concrete dome structure in existence, is estimated to have also been the largest domed structure that the Romans could have built without collapse. Examining how much load an arched bridge can hold is a little tricky. Since all of the components of an arch function in compression loading, the maximum value of any given arch are essentially equivalent to the shearing point of any material. Granite, for example, would be a far better arch construction material than sandstone. Even still, the ability for arches to hold load is far beyond any other structural element, even those today. A well-built arch from stone doesn't even need mortar to connect the parts. Rather, the friction forces from compression keep the structure stable. Rather than spend hours determining the maximum load of an arch constructed of a given stone, we're going to settle with a maximum loading value of a really big number. For the Romans, and even engineers today, a solid arch structure's yield point is far beyond realistic loads that a structure would ever see. These same principles that made the arch so strong also made them last so long. When a structure created from arches undergoes a series of loads creating low material stresses and strains, fatigue seen in the arch over time is very minimal, if anything. Since arches' yield points are so far beyond practical loading values, they tend to last until the rock or structure is weathered, in turn, a very long time. The Romans did use concrete to build many of their structures, like the Colosseum. The concrete was far more resistant to weathering than modern concrete due to the abundance of volcanic ash used in its construction. Through this increased weathering capabilities and the strength of solid arches, Roman architecture and buildings are still around today in nearly all of their original beauty.